In this video, we discuss the topic of salvaging barn wood. This is a continuation of the video sourcing barn wood. Let's get into the video. you're gonna need some power when you're out there you can always rely on being power at the building ball rest in case you're working at heights multiple pairs of gloves our secret weapon the air denailer that's right I said denailer you're also gonna want a number of pry bars bolt cutters hammers and maybe some tools that you build yourself to get some of these boards off the skill saw is awfully handy with nail biter blades. And every time that you're doing anything, you're gonna want a dust mask. I mean, that's a hundred years worth of dirt. A couple hand wrenches and ladders of multiple sizes with the other secret weapon and lots of those. The, when you're working to keep your material up off the ground, saw horses are super handy. If you don't have any right now, it's pretty easy, just go ahead and build a few. Uh, I promise you, you will love it. Uh, trailer's awfully handy because you're gonna have to haul this stuff home. A couple things worth mention is the wood itself when salvaging. I mean, during your sourcing, you found out what exactly that you need um, for your project or maybe it's for resale. I mean, either which way, know what you want for material, know what you need, and know what you can get safely out of these buildings. I mean, when you, if you start, if you're taking it all and you're starting from the top and all the way down, I mean, you're gonna get a pile of great wood, though there's still gonna be waste. But we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, like during your sourcing, you checked out all the barn and anything that's unsafe and just kind of document, take pictures, make sure that you can work around it safely because you're gonna start at the top and you're gonna work your way down. I mean, you think of the way that they built these buildings. They started from the ground, they worked their way up. The last thing to go on was the roof. So you can start by taking that roof off and you can literally do this uh, like with one guy uh, suggested to have more because it would be safer and a little bit of equipment. So you can pretty much bank on you know, a couple thousand dollars if you're gonna be renting something to get you up to work safely at heights, to get a couple guys to help you, fuel, and your own time, not to mention all the sawzall blades that you need, etc., etc., etc. It's like it never ends. So be very sure of what's expected of you and what is expected of the land owner. Make sure that you definitely have your sourcing, your contract, your safety covered, and all the tools that you need. And most importantly, know what you're gonna be taking. I mean, you might not be taking the whole building because it's gonna be destroyed anyway. So that kind of arrangement that you make with the landlord super, or the landlord, the landowner is super, super important. So as far as breaking down the material that's in these buildings for what you need, you for us, the most valuable is the siding that's on the outside of the barns or houses or granaries, chicken coops, those kinds of buildings is the siding. So a lot of this wood a uh, hundred years ago came from BC for the most part on train and a lot of it was old growth uh, Douglas fir which I say old growth I mean compared to what there is today you could take those two sticks of two by four and cut them and go side by side and the growth rings you'll have like double in the wood that's being salvaged well today out of this barn itself it's perfect for projects around the house or off when I say siding, I'm talking about the weathered gray, uh, maybe faded 
paint chipped out and a little gray in the background. That is what is super popular and, and we, we try and salvage as much as that as possible. Next in line, uh, depending, uh, probably the beams, but you can't get those. It's like the treat at the end of the tunnel. It's like that, it's like that carrot, you know, in, in front of the horse. You get those at the very end, but the, a lot of them there are six by six, five by five, there's a lot of four by fours, there's eight by eight sometimes, and bigger. So the cedar's beautiful, it uh, weathers differently, it, it provides more of a, a gray tone, uh, an earth tone brown with uh, kind of gray in the background, you get like these streaks of, of cream color, and it's just a very unique color that there's no way you can buy it off the shelf in the store. There's no way. So that those are uh, one of the top two that we look for. All the panels that are inside of the barn are super valuable for people that are wanting to do maybe tabletops because uh, they're nice, wide, usually thick boards. Maybe, um, I don't know, pretty much Anything that, that is uh, beautiful, made into furniture, uh, comes from those types of boards. I guess next on our hit list is flooring, loft flooring. Now this barn here, pretty much you, we're just like Xing out everything from ground level up because it's been so waterlogged. I mean, you gotta, you gotta kind of pick your battles of what wood you want. For us, principle A is make sure that that roof is good. If the roof is good, then man, you got you got all the wood. So that flooring is is good for us, and you can do a lot with it. But it has to be in good shape. Um, some of it gets warped, waterlogged, um, covered with uh, straw for years, and you you know it's one of those things. It's back to the waste pile with that. Last thing on our list is little like window frames, this, uh, doors, and hardware. Hardware for us is pretty popular. A lot of people like to do their own kind of crafting with them, whether it be hinges or square nails or roller tracks. Yeah, so that's how we break it down and we figure out what we need from there. I mean, last thing you want are these things everywhere. You know, they're a decent nail, you know. We'll go through any tire. And of course, there's a ton of them. Out of a barn this size, you'll probably get, I don't know, half to maybe three quarters of a pail, like five gallon pail of nails. According to the agreement that you made with the landowner, you're going to want to put up that metal with the wood, maybe start making pile in a designated area. All metal goes in that pile. All wood goes in this pile. Pick up as you go along. That's probably my biggest word of advice. Not only does it like make things nicer because you have a, a clean workspace, but then you also reduce hazards that, you know, those nails aren't sticking out, just waiting to be stepped on or who knows what, right? So you don't want that. But if you do keep yourself a little organized, it'll make things go way smoother. You're not just salvaging the wood, you're also salvaging the story. When you're out collecting wood from these buildings, it's, it's important to ask, you know, what's the deal with this building what, what's the story behind it do you have any memories uh, when speaking with the landowner and quite often there'll be memories being pulled out of out of the woodworks you might say <laughs> like for example this building here um, dates back to like a long time ago the exact date not a hundred percent sure other than my 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 dad's dad etc right so this building here in particular you can see the stone foundation that is around the the one side of the barn and actually at one time that roof was never there um, this roof in particular however there was flax straw and it was put on there for the roof you know yay thick 
and apparently it was warm as heck but over time guys are probably like you know we keep putting this roof on every five years why don't we just put a wood one on it's interesting to to not only just salvage the wood but to salvage the story i mean we really enjoy passing these types of stories on and people really sit back and listen because this is part of uh, our Canadian heritage. I highly recommend just touching base with the landowner on some of the history. It'll be worth your while, I promise.